Hi, I'm Julia, and I'm here with Ike Cadenza, and I'm sitting here with Robert McPherson immediately before Opera Works performance of the original opera, Passage to Paradise. And we're really excited to be here with Robert today. Hi, Robert. Hello. Robert, can you tell us a little bit about how you first started in opera and how you got involved with opera in the first place? It's actually been kind of a, a long, windy path to get here. Uh, I was a preacher's kid, so I started out actually singing gospel as a, as a young child. Through high school, I found, of course, choirs and stuff like that, and went to the University of Puget Sound, where I studied voice. But after I left college, I went into musical theater for a long period of time. I was a working actor in the Seattle market for many, a uh, number of years. And finally, after a while, decided that my true calling was opera. And ever since then, I've been pretty much a full-time singer. I'm working on about 13 years now as a full-time opera singer. That's great. And how did you first get involved with Opera Works? At one point, um, <clears throat> a couple seasons ago, I was at a point in my career where I realized I needed to make some changes. And I've been doing that for the last two years. I started with a new teacher, uh, working on languages, a bunch of stuff. But I could feel that there was some body work that I needed to do. There were some things inside of me that I really wanted to unleash. And this seemed like not only the best program, but one of the only programs of its type that I thought would address some of the issues that I felt I had uh, physically and just kind of emotionally open myself up. So uh, I applied on the very, very last day possible because uh, I kept going back and forth. Am I going to do this? Am I not going to do this? Uh, but as soon as I made the decision, I was really happy with it and been at peace ever, with it, ever since with it. That's true. Opera Works performances are so unusual and original and, and so exciting because they're very close to, they're so emotionally close to, to the raw emotion that the, the performer is experiencing. Very much. Kind of going along with that, what do you think it is about opera that's, that distinguishes it from other art forms? What do you think it is that makes it so unique? We are the one of the last art forms where the unamplified human voice is still given flight. Musical theater has gone all amplified. Uh, even plays on Broadway now are amplified. Everything that we consume comes through little speakers now. It's downloadable, it's digital, it, it's streamed. It, it's not the real, raw, human experience anymore. We have a filter between us and that emotion. Opera doesn't have that. It's one person or two people or whatever standing on stage truly showing you what a human voice is capable of. I mean, it's the Olympics of, of vocalism. But also that raw emotion comes through. There's no speakers, there's no sound man, there's no microphones. It's just the human voice. in an era where that seems less relevant to a lot of people, I happen to believe it's even more so. It, because it is so unique, I think we need to connect with that, that human voice again. 
That's so true. I, I completely agree with that. So the main issue facing us right now and facing the opera industry is the fact that there is so much competition from digital media. And what do you think it? What do you think we can do to encourage people to really ch give opera a, ch a chance and to check it out? Well, one of the things I think a lot of people have a preconception of opera that's not really based on anything. It's based on, oh, I, I don't like opera because that's what they're supposed to say. A lot of them haven't really even experienced it. They haven't really watched it or, or seen anything. Um, so I think the first step is to get people to experience what it is. I think the Met has been quite instrumental in these high-def broadcasts. I mean, you know, it's not the same thing, but it is showing the power and the majesty that opera can uh, possess. I mean, I'm surprised how many clips now are on YouTube. Uh, there, there's so much more available readily for anyone. So, of course, you know, you got to get through the static. You got to get through uh, people's lives. They just don't feel like they have the time to sit down and watch three hours of anything. So if we can get people beyond that, if we can get them to experience even a small portion of it, when somebody can hear an aria and hear it live, I'm, I'm amazed at the response and especially if you can get them young. Watching kids, I used to do some outreach things when I was in San Jose, and you'd see these kids going like, I could feel your voice. I mean, they were just so overwhelmed by, they'd never heard sound vibrations hit them like that, and they could feel it throughout their whole body. You know, you get all sorts of responses. Sometimes it's a little bit like, oh my God, loud man won't <laughs> shut up. Um, but, but still, you get this visceral response for them, and I think, I think it's important. So I, I believe the outreach uh, with, with kids is a very good thing to get a, a generation to at least be exposed to it. A lot of people I know now that watch opera will tell you that there was a point when they were you know, teenagers or kids growing up in the house that they were exposed to it. And then they kind of didn't listen to it and it came back later in their life. So I think those formative years are very important. And what is your personal favorite opera or composer? It kind of, it's a fluid thing in my life, but right now I would have to say L'Elisir d'Armore, uh, Donizetti. It's one of those amazing operas where it's comic and it's real. I mean, there's, there's real emotion that, that people respond to, yet at times it's, it's very goofy. Um, and of course you get to sing Una Furtiva Lagrima, which is one of the most amazing opera arias, so. What will you be singing today? I will be singing an aria from uh, the Pearl Fishers. Uh, it's not a commonly performed opera, though I am fortunately going to get to, uh, to do it in Cleveland uh, coming up a year from now. But he's remembering in this past this, this moment where he was watching the princess, this goddess, and how he was just inflamed with passion. Of course it's a little different in this show um, because we're doing kind of a pastiche where you're taking different arias, different songs, and you're stringing them along in some sort of a narrative. So in this one it's, it's a little bit different, uh, it's a little bit more bittersweet and it's a lot more emotional uh, where he's basically singing about the death of his wife who has just happened. He's, she's died in his arms. So it, it's it deals and, and works with some emotions in me that I've, I've never been able to bring to stage before, and it's, it's pretty powerful. very excited to hear it today and in addition to the the Pearl Fishers that you will be performing in a year what, what else do you have upcoming where else will, what can we hear you well um, I'm going back to the Met to uh, cover uh, Barbara of Seville and then in the spring I'm doing uh, La Juive with New Israeli Opera uh, singing Leopoldo 
And then uh, got the Pearl Fishers, uh, have a L'Italiana coming up with uh, Florentine Opera. So I keep pretty busy. I'm fortunate. You're really busy. That's great. Well, we can't wait to hear your performance today. And thank you so much for taking time to sit down with us today. My pleasure.